Did you guys see those videos on Instagram? I really need to sage now, now that I've, I've filmed and I need to sage. Like, I think Eileen crossed over, but I just need to make sure she crosses over again because I don't want her hanging out here tonight. But I feel like it's a little warm, you know? Like, it was, it was 90 degrees in Vegas today. This is definitely a fall robe. And uh, I could be making a mistake with these heated lights right now. Cross your fingers that I don't pass out of heat stroke. You know what I mean? Can you imagine that in the middle of the video? I just like slump over. So first, let's let's be real for a minute. Let's just be real. I haven't uploaded, I actually haven't filmed a Creeps and Cosmetics for a couple of weeks. I wanna talk about why for a sec. I am a huge fan of Bailey. Um, as you guys know, she does murder mysteries. Um, I love her. I, I stated that months ago. But I had some of her fans come for me on social media last week. And I was actually really shocked by it. Because just knowing who she is, like, as a public personality, I don't think she'd like that. So basically, her fans came at me saying that, like, I stole her content and I stole her idea. Wait a second. Wait a second. Let's back the truck up. I think she's been doing m murder mystery makeup or whatever for 10 months. I've been on YouTube since 2014 doing paranormal. I am also not doing murder mystery makeup. She does like murder cases. I think she gets a lot of her cases off like the ID channel, which is also one of my favorite channels. Also a couple of years ago, I did a couple of Twitch streams while I was doing makeup and that was way before Bailey started filming hers. But I don't really think this is a pissing contest. Like, I think there's plenty of room for everybody, and I think we should all be cheering each other on and fixing each other's crowns rather than tearing them down. So, I would just love if my fans that have been following me for years, literally have another YouTube channel that people don't even know about that has millions of views, been on for years, like literally since 2014. I would just love if my fans, if you see comments from people claiming that I've copied Bailey or whatever, just politely get them to understand that I've had been on YouTube for six years. I think that's a lot longer than Bailey. But once again, I'm not going to do a, a pissing contest because I think we're both different and I think there's room for both of us. I don't know, she kind of comes across as the type of person that wouldn't like that, you know? Like, she wouldn't want her fans going after people. I don't want my fans going after people. It, you know, I'm not gonna lie and say it didn't put me in a funk for a minute. I was in a funk for a couple of weeks and I just needed a minute to, like, clear my head and, and be in a better headspace. Woo! That robe was just way too hot. Way too hot. So anyway, if any of my fans see people talking about me or Bailey, just politely, politely put them in their place, you know? I'm still human, like I ignore haterade as much as I can, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm still human. Also, this pony is one of the new ponies from INH. I'll link it down below. It's called Lola, and this is the color Platinum. So I was just filming like crazy on um, Instagram stories, talking about who we're going to be um, discussing today, who is Eileen. Carol Wernos. Um, she was a serial killer in uh, Florida. And we're gonna get to all the deets. But um, one of the interesting things that kind of made her who she was um, is that it, there's a predominant bar that she used to pick men up from. And they say it's haunted, but it's also Phlox fans from all over the world for like serial killer status or like Eileen. Let's just dig right in. Right now it is 9 p.m. in Las Vegas and it's 85 degrees out, which means summer is almost ending. This is where I had the branch, the run in with the branch. I think that's gonna scar because it's just not healing. I'm not technically gonna be going out anywhere um, because obviously it's nine o'clock at night. So I'm gonna start with, my skin's changing because it's getting, um, cooler now in Vegas, so my skin's starting to get dry. I have like dry patches. So I wanted to tell you guys about Kanuka. So it's this brand, it's a CBD brand. This is the Face Balm. It's a little bit thicker. It's CBD and it's one of the only things that I can find, Kanuka specifically. I've tried a lot of CBD brands, but Kanuka, um, I think they have a little bit higher content of CBD. There's a misconception where people think if they use a CBD product that it's gonna cause them to get or feel high. No, not at all. Um, but it is one of the only products, Kanuka specifically, that I could find to 
um, heal acne when I was having like actual um, acne issues and like cystic acne. So this is heavier balm. So I'm gonna put this on first just because I have some dry patches. I also use this at night sometimes as like an overnight mask and I'll just sleep with it on all night. They have really great products. If you have sensitive skin at all, they also have amazing um, cleanser that they um, that's CBD infused. It's a face cleanser. I need to get better about tagging product like brands on my Instagram too. I'm gonna try and do that this round. My eyes are a little bit red. I was driving around with the top off the Jeep today, and it got a little bit hot. And I'm so fair that I think I got a little bit of a suntan going on and my eyes got a little bit red from driving in the sun so that's the skin balm i have some mini sizes these are the travel sizes um because i like to throw them in my purse in case i'm having like a moment when i'm out in vegas but they have a, a larger one of these um honestly one of my favorite brands ever so i'm just gonna let this sort of seep in for a few minutes also, one of my favorite chapsticks, Carmex Walgreens. Some people were saying they've never heard of Carmex, and I was like, wow, really? So yeah, this is like a dollar at Walgreens. I have to use something hardcore um, living in the desert, you know what I'm saying? So this definitely has a heavier consistency, so it does take a little bit longer for it to seep in the skin. I definitely wouldn't recommend putting a super heavy amount on before makeup, because it could cause your makeup to slide off, but I am letting this seep in and then I'm gonna add a primer on top. Okay, since I used the balm and it is a little bit heavier, I don't wanna put something else heavy on top. So I'm using um, Rainforest of the Sea 4-in-1 um, Setting Mist and Primer Spray by Tarte. I picked up Zero from the Spirit Halloween store. I'm gonna hang him somewhere in here. I thought he was too cute. Isn't he cute? For makeup today, for foundation, I'm gonna go back in with the e.l.f. Um, Flawless Satin Foundation. I've been mixing the two, which is um, light ivory and sand. I mix the two. I usually need about two pumps of each. There is movement in my studio. It's probably Eileen. All kinds of noises going on in here. I don't know, I'm gonna be honest and say like, her story is pretty radical and um, not a lot of serial killers, uh, you know, when their time comes are like, oh, I'm gonna go see God and Jesus. And she did say that. So I do truly feel like she was gonna cross over. Like she knew she needed to meet her maker for, for what she had done regardless of the situation and outcome. I think she knew not many serial killers will say that. You know, I think a lot stay behind because they don't want to meet their maker. I don't feel that with her. Okay, so that is the base of foundation. I'm gonna do um, the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer for um, my under eyes. I'm gonna do Fair Warm. I do want to use a bronzy contour today. I'm gonna go in with Fenty in 220. This is a Fenty concealer. It's a little bit light, but honestly, that's just kind of what I'm going for here. I don't want anything too deep today. Remember, I do not like to cream contour my nose because I just think powder looks more natural. Fenty setting powder in butter. The last thing I'm gonna do, I just primed, but as you guys know, I have oily lids, so I'm just gonna take a basic pale white shadow and I'm just gonna set this primer mainly in my crease before it starts to get out of control. Whew, all right, and on that note, who's ready for some creeps and cosmetics, hmm? Eileen Wuornos, um, or Eileen Carol Wuornos, also known as Lee, was known as an American female prostitute for my Femme Fatale series. And I'm gonna be using ColourPop It's My Pleasure palette because actually she was a proud, proud prostitute. Like she made her money that way, boo. 
These are the colors. We're going with purple nurples. That one's dangerous. Like, bam. I'm just swatching these. I've used this palette like maybe one time. I just want to see what the shimmers look like so I know where we're going with this. That one's like a duochrome. What kind of story are we going to tell with this palette? Hmm. Let's see. I think I'm gonna go with the deep purple on the under eye, um, under the water line. And um, for some reason, like these two are kind of speaking to me. So I'm gonna do something with those, I think. Maybe this one will be inner corner. Let's get kind of crazy with it. So if you were following me tonight on Instagram, which is Sunday, August, or August, feels like it's August, feels like 2020 is just gonna carry on forever. It is September, 13th and I was going off on Instagram. I was talking about Eileen and I was watching videos So when I plan creeps and cosmetics like it is strategic, you know what I mean? Like it's very strategic earth shine is in the middle and I just I don't know I'm feeling like I just want to I Don't know what's wrong with me. I'm like getting carried away with highlighter. Okay. Look at that. That showed up. Okay. I Can do that Highlighter down crystal put the highlighter down this girl Had a sad sad life like eek. born February 29th of 1956 Okay prostitute living in Florida who murdered seven men in the name of self-defense Claiming that she was sexually assaulted and raped by the men she murdered. Okay, um it goes way deeper than that. So I'm not even sure where to start. We're gonna we're gonna back the truck up and we're gonna start with um, her early life. And I have a lot of opinions on this as well. So I'm gonna start with what happened as a child and then we're just gonna kind of go from there and spin off into oblivion. So first for pigments, I think I'm gonna go in with called Kittenfish. I don't, I don't know. So her mother was born in 1939 and her mother's name was Diane Wornos. Her mother was actually 14 years old, 14, when she got married um, to Eileen's father. Obviously, we all see where that's going. I mean, being a child bride, I don't think you're going to really have the most successful life starting your life off so young with no education and, and you know, getting married. Her father was Leo Dale um, Pittman, and he was 16. So the mom was 14, and the dad was 16. When I was, I th when I talk about stories like this, I think back to when I was that age. You know, like what was I doing at 14? I was um, in what eighth grade, right? Barely ninth grade. Had no idea about life. Had no clue about life. What was I doing at 16? Same. Same. Had no idea. I was like, I was a skater chick that was a cheerleader, kind of a misfit. People liked me, but I didn't like people. And that's a mood, right? I'm just blending this with like a fluffier brush. And uh, I can't imagine being married at that age. There's no way, there's just no way. Eileen had an older brother named Keith. So she was born in 1956. He was born in 1954. So. He was like two years um, older than her, so it's not, not a huge age difference. The parents had been married for two years, so this is basically now the dad is 18 and the mom is 16. So two years of marriage um, and two months before Eileen was actually born, the mom left the dad and filed for divorce. Can you imagine being 16 years old filing for divorce? How? Like, how do you even know to do that? You know what I mean? Like, times were really strange then, you know? So here's the sick part. So, <sighs> this story is so twisted and it just keeps getting more twisted. So the dad is now 18. The mom is now 16. She's a single parent of two at the age of 16. And the father is going to be incarcerated, going to prison for child molestation. So Eileen never meets her father because at the time she's born, he's already being imprisoned for child molestation. Whew, this girl started out with a rough life, man. She had just no chance from the get-go, no chance. 
you know, you look at these serial killers, and I'm sorry, but, like, when it first starts, like, you have to blame the parents. You have to blame the parents, because... Damn. Before I get too into this, I think I'm going to go in with another fluffy brush and fan fiction, which is this one. I think we'll move to this one next. This isn't really quite a purple palette. It's more of, like, a like a magenta palette, I guess. So I'm just gonna go on the outer corner and I'm gonna blend this slightly into the crease. So Leo Dale is her father. He ends up being uh, diagnosed with schizophrenia and he is um, obviously incarcerated for convictions of um, child molestation, um, schizophrenic. Now, there's a, schizophrenia is a, t it's a tough t subject, right? Because um, they say it can be hereditary, but it can also be brought on by trauma. So we won't really know about her dad's life. Um, we don't really know how his came about, but I do think Eileen also had schizophrenia, which I think was passed on genetically. So it definitely can be can be passed on, which is really, really sad. If you watch any interviews she does, um, there's a lot of paranoia going on and something called switching. So it's actually called um, disassociative identity disorder or personality disorder. And uh, basically what happens neurologically is they go through trauma at different points in their life. You know, everyone has trauma, but rather than processing the trauma the way most of us do, they create a personality for that trauma. And when a future um, scenario pops up that they associate with that previous trauma, that is when the personality comes out. Um, there's an actually a YouTuber that is, I think from the UK, and she's really famous, and I've watched a ton of her videos on disassociative identity disorder. If I can find it, I will um, put it here for you guys. But she has, um, you know, multiple personalities and she calls them alters. And uh, basically, um, there's usually one in particular that's like considered a protector of all of them. You see that protector come out in some of Eileen's videos when she's speaking publicly about the trials. So anyway, I'm not gonna go much deeper into that. So her father was convicted of sex crimes against children. Luckily, he was imprisoned, right, um, when Eileen um, was born. So she couldn't have some molestation going on from him, you would think. So Leo Dale was born in 1937, and he died in 1969. So at the age of 32, he hung himself in prison. She never got to meet him. Don't you think that's like immediate daddy issues, right? Like, it's just immediate daddy issues. Like, she's probably never um, got answers that she wanted. And then, you know, like, the only sort of answers you're getting is that, oh, you're, you know, your dad was a pedophile. Um, but now he's dead and gone, and you have no way of getting the answers that you want. I think she just started off really messed up. Once again, this is just bringing empathy and light to the person that she was. Um, you can think of what you want to, you know, from the crime she committed. Yes, you can say she murdered seven people, but man, she had a jacked up life. Like, this is what serial killers are made of. So in 1969, Eileen was four and her brother was six. And her mom um, literally took her and her brother and dropped them off at her grandparents' house or her house, which, um, her mother's house, which, so Eileen's grandparents, so it was her mom's mom and dad, um, and left and basically signed custody over and um, that was it. She went on her merry way, which let's be real here, how in the world at 16 would you be able to know how to take care of a child anyways? I think, I don't know, I just feel like Eileen was kind of dark. So we're gonna go in like inner corner here and then outer corner with the dark. I don't usually do inner corner dark. I usually like to go like dark to light, but this is for Eileen. So I'm sort of packing it on the inner corner, but I need to blend it out. So I'm gonna take a different brush. I'm actually gonna get kitten fish. What is that called? Kitten fish? Why, why would you name a color that's strange? 
I'm actually kind of going up into my brow. I don't know why, I just feel very compelled to do so. Kind of like a Nikki tutorials moment where she just uses the whole eye. I think I'm gonna for sure have to cut crease this sucker because it just kind of got out of control. You know, like with the purple, like it wasn't, it kind of started to um, mousify a little bit, which means it all like blended into one color. So I'm gonna cut crease this bitch. Oh, I hate cut creases on my eye. It's just, I have hooded eyes and I don't, I'm not a cut crease push person, I'm just not. I took that in a direction that was not expecting me to take it and it's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, so after Eileen was basically given up um, for adoption to her grandparents, um, they actually did legally end up adopting her and her brother Keith. So the sad part that comes next for Eileen's story is that both of the grandparents were like raging alcoholics. And that's probably why the mom ended up leaving at 14 to get married, was to escape the grandparents. So by the age of 11, Eileen already figured out what prostitution was. So it started at a very, very young age. Eileen would prostitute at the age of 11 for things like food and drugs and cigarettes. By the age of 11, she had also started engaging in sexual activities with her brother. So there was also incest that was going on. So um, Eileen, at the age of 11, starts engaging in sexual activity with her brother, which is just like really, really sad and raunchy. Also her um, maternal grandfather who adopted her, Eileen says that um, her grandfather is now um, molesting her and forcing her to engage in sexual activities with him. And he's the one that actually taught her um, to strip in front of him. He would also like beat the living crap out of her um, um, in 1970, Eileen became pregnant um, and the pregnancy was from one of her grandfather's um, friends who had raped her and she ended up pregnant and her grandmother and grandfather sent her away um, to like an all girls home for like pregnant unwed mothers and uh, that was where she gave birth and um, gave the child up for adoption. So Eileen does have a biological child somewhere out there, possibly even grandchildren at this point. Um, he was a boy who she gave birth to. Um, March 23rd of 1971 is when the child was pl placed for adoption. So can you imagine like somebody is out there not only the child of Eileen, but the grandchild, maybe even great-grandchild, like, who knows? Like, it's crazy, like, and, like, adoption, like, people are really getting into finding their birth parents and stuff, so that would be almost shocking to find out that was your biological parent or even, like, maternal grandparent or whatever. I'm just throwing on a quick coat of mascara before I put on my falsies. So at 14, she's become pregnant. She's only 14, guys. We've only made it to her 14th birthday. Like, dang, this girl has lived a hard life. And it's not even her fault. It's not even her fault. What kind of lip do you do with this? I have some really, like, dark purples. Um, I have Kylie. I have two of them. I also have a Pat McGrath. It's like, it's purple, but it looks black. Or are the eyes enough? You know what I mean? Okay, I have two Kylie's. I have a super purple dark, which is Wicked, and then I have a Kylie in Shady, which is more of like a blue. And then I have Pat McGrath, which is in Nightshade. Which one? Which one do we go with? Do we try all three? Like, what, what should I do here? This one's more blue toned by Kylie. I'm gonna go with Wicked. I don't know what I'm doing. This could be a huge mistake, and if it is, we'll just take it off and go with a, a nudie, you know? I do have to say though, Kylie has some of the nicest lip liners. Like, she really scored on those. Purple's not too bad. It's not too bad, right? Um, P.S. Elf came out with a new setting spray. This is Stay All Night, and it's like 10 bucks, and I love it. Something's missing. 
All right, where did we leave off with little Eileen? Oh my God, this is so sad. A few months after her son was born, she ended up dropping out of school. Well, yeah, I mean, postpartum exists. She has no support system. She's all over the place and she's already learned what prostitution is. She's been raped, she's had a child that she's lost. She never got to meet her dad. Oh my God, like what do you expect her to become? How do you crawl your way out of this? You know what I mean? Like. She's never been taught a thing in her life. She's never been taught about self-love, coping mechanisms. She's surrounded by toxicity. What do you expect? I have these little tiny heart pearls. And I just really wanna put like one for her right there. And then I'm gonna take a little, little bit of this pink. Soon after she dropped out of high school, her grandmother died of liver failure because she was an alcoholic. And now she's left to fend for herself. Um, her grandfather hated her probably because she got pregnant. She probably was blamed for that. Um, and her grandfather uh, threw her out of the house. And that's when she started supporting herself with prostitution. And she actually started camping out and living in the woods near her home. That is tragic. That is traumatic and tragic. I can't even believe another human could treat a human that way. So this was really interesting to me. Her very first criminal offense was on May 27th of 1974. She was arrested in Jefferson County, Colorado for driving under the influence and she received a DUI, disorderly conduct, and she had a 22 caliber pistol in the car. Now here's why I think that's funny. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I'm from Colorado and I grew up in Jefferson County. So that's crazy, her first criminal offense was there. Um, she was only 18, so at some point she made herself, um, you know, made her way to Colorado. In 1976, she started to hitchhike from Colorado to Florida. She fell in love with a 69 year old man. Was she gold digging or was it because she'd been molested by her grandpa and older men? So are we seeing a pattern here of her like, you know, karmatic patterns like I talk about? Um, she marries this 69 year old. She ended up hitting him with his own cane. He got a restraining order against her and they obviously filed for divorce. July 17th of 1976, her brother Keith died of esophagus cancer. Isn't that interesting? And he had a, a life insurance policy and she was to receive $10,000. She blew the money really quick. She bought a car, wrecked the car a few days later. Um, she tried to pay some of her old fines off and the money was just gone in an instant. So by May 20th of 1981, she's back in Florida. This is when she's received her first like official arrest um, in Florida and this is because she held up a convenience store and uh, she ended up only getting $35 and a couple packs of cigarettes. May 4th of 1982 she was sentenced to prison. January 4th of 1986 she was arrested in Miami this time. She was charged with car theft. That was one of the big things that she did continually throughout her career as a criminal. June 2nd of 1986, I was about one at this point. She was um, questioned by deputies because a male counterpart that she was engaging prostitution with accused her of pulling a gun on him and demanding $200. Now this was the time she met her kind of counterpart and this girl was named Tyra Moore and she went by Ty for short. She was a local hotel maid and they met in a lesbian bar. Shortly after they met, they ended up moving in together. Eileen actually supported them um, with her like money that she made with prostitution. She had several other assaults. She was constantly getting in fights with people at grocery stores. She was getting in fights with um, people at the bar. She was notorious for throwing beer bottles at people. Um, she would be on a local bus, like the county bus, and um, she would get in a fight with the bus driver and the police would be called. So there was many, many incidences that happened. So let's talk about the murders. So there was um, seven people that were murdered in a matter of 12 months. Richard Charles Mallory, who was 51, he was murdered November 30th of 1989. He was an electronic store owner. He was a convicted rapist. So Eileen claims she killed him in self-defense. She claims he drove them to like an abandoned area. He sodomized her and beat her and then she killed him. 
Two days after he went missing, a sheriff found the abandoned vehicle. And December 13th, about two weeks later, his body was found in a wooded area and he'd been shot several times. David Andrew Spears, who was age 47, he was a construction worker. His family reported him missing on May 19th of 1990. On June 1st, so about two weeks later, his naked body was found. He'd been shot six times and he was found naked on the side of a highway. Charles Edmund was 40, May 31st of 1990. So this is about a week later. So she's kind of getting thirsty, like bloodthirsty. He had now been shot nine times. This time the body had been wrapped in an electric blanket and they weren't sure why, um, but he was found badly, badly decomposing. Peter Abraham was 65. He was retired veteran. They don't know his exact date of death, but he did meet Eileen in June of 1990. So these murders are happening back to back. On July 4th of 1990, his uh, car was found abandoned. So that's about a month later. There was a bloody handprint that was found inside of the car, but his body was never found. So that's weird. Troy Eugene was 50. He was a sausage salesman. Is there any room for puns? I don't think there is. July 31st of 1990, he was reported missing. On August 4th of 1990, his body was found. He'd been shot twice. He was also found in a wooded area. Charles Richard Humphreys, he was 56. He met Eileen September 11th of 1990. He was a retired US Air Force major. September 12th, his body was found, so literally a day later. He was fully clothed, but he had also been shot six times, so that's that's her lucky number. Walter Gino, he was 62, he was a trucker, and he was also a security guard. He met Eileen November 19th of 1990. He was also naked and found in a remote area. This time he was only shot four times. January 9th of 1991, Eileen was arrested. This is one of the keys for later. So the last resort is the bar and it's in Florida and it's a biker bar and that's where she was arrested. And there's kind of a shrine that's still there for her to this day. So now they were looking for Ty cause that was her girlfriend, right? Ty at this time had already left her. Um, I don't know if they were actually officially broken up. She was supposedly just visiting family in Pennsylvania. So they have Eileen arrested and then they find out that Ty is in Pennsylvania. So police actually go to Pennsylvania and they say, okay, Ty, we have Eileen. We think that she's been on this murder rant. We need your help pinning her. They asked Ty if she knew anything about the murders. Ty did suspect one of them because Eileen had come home one night when they were staying in hotels. They were living in and out of trailers, hotels, and even homeless like in tents. And one night Eileen came home and said, I murdered a guy today. And Ty said, I never wanted to hear about it. And she said, I also didn't want to know in case she would come after me and kill me. So it was a safety issue. So the police basically gave her immunity in exchange for talking to Eileen and like, you know, setting up like a plot to get her caught and for her to admit to any of the murders on the phone with Ty. Ty agreed and went back to Florida with police and had police protection and got Eileen on the phone and got her to admit um, the murders that she had, she had done. In June of 1992, Eileen pled guilty to murder. November of 1992, she received a death sentence with the state of Florida. In 1996, she did um, try to uh, do a petition to appeal her execution, it was denied. In 2002, she started um, basically filing uh, complaints that people in the prison system, the government was after her, trying to murder her and kill her by poisoning her food, by tapping her lines, and she was also accusing the system of um, like sonar um, poisoning which is like sonar in her room and being poisoned. The weeks before her um, execution, she gave a lot of interviews. Um, also, this is when Holly, this is also when Hollywood stepped in and Charlize Theron had accepted um, the role as um, Eileen. Eileen was very upset about this. She didn't like that Hollywood was making money off of her. Her execution took place October 9th of 2002 by lethal injection and she was pronounced dead at 9.47 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Her last meal could have been anything that she wanted and she opted for a cup of coffee instead. Her last words were, 
Yes, I would just like to say that I'm sailing with the rock and I'll be back like Independence Day with Jesus. June 6th, like the movie, big mothership and all, I'll be back, I'll be back. She was the 10th woman to receive execution in the United States, only the second in Florida. Um, she was cremated. Um, one of her childhood friends obtained her ashes and spread her ashes near a place that she grew up in Michigan. So a lot of people basically said that they thought she had a lot of anger inside of her and resentment working as a prostitute. Um, they thought that maybe she had, you know, dealt with incredible violence with the men on the road and she finally kind of was like a volcano and exploded and, and started acting out those, those angers on like random men. Um, so Eileen to her deathbed said that she killed the men in self-defense. So I watched um, her her last interview before she was um, executed. She's carrying on a lot about rants, about things like um, they're trying to poison me and all this stuff. If you've ever studied something such as like criminal psychology or even neuroscience, you learn about neurotransmitters in the brain and you learn about how different drugs affect the brain and just how like your regular like serotonin dopamine like that you produce naturally affects the brain and you know some of the um sure signs for multiple personality disorders um is things like paranoia like severe paranoia like thinking people are after you thinking people are coming for you um personality changes where you can in a split second go from one one person to the next and obviously her father suffered from schizophrenia she had childhood abuse as well oftentimes when you have schizophrenia or um, disassociative personality disorder what it does is it usually is developed in childhood and it's developed from severe trauma severe abuse in your childhood and what basically happens, like for her example, like, you know, she was, um, you know, being molested by her grandfather for who knows how long. It probably was going on before the age of 11. And uh, you kind of don't know how to deal with it as a child. Obviously, that's a normal response. And you build up kind of like an invisible friend in your mind. And that is your protector. That's your protector. So anytime your grandfather comes in to assault you, you step backwards and their protector steps forward, right? There can be other ones. They, they also have something called littles, which is really the traumatized child that's in there. And sometimes they talk like a baby and they like literally get curled up on the floor and cry. There's all kinds of different personalities that can be in there. Um, Eileen obviously identified as a lesbian, but yet she was able to sleep with men. So I would assume she would have like a, a straight counterpart that would step forward as a personality and then her actually true self, which was the lesbian, step forward. So I think there were many um, disassociative, that's what it's called, you're disassociating by using different personalities within. A um, lot of trauma from a very early age, obviously. Losing your mother, um, her mother walked away and that was just sort of it. Who knows if her mom ever even had any more kids. No, that hasn't even been mentioned. No one really knows. Not just raising kids, but maybe even getting pregnant and giving more children up for adoption. So nobody, she never had answers. Then you have the grandparents involved, which are just severe alcoholics, abusive. Then she gets kicked out at 15 after she's lost a child by a rape who was not held. None of these people in her life as a child were held accountable for these cruel, abusive things that went on. And now she becomes an adult. And honestly, I think when she's murdering these people, that now obviously the one guy was a convicted rapist, right? So clearly, yes, he, he has a criminal record, but there's all of these other men that are now involved. I don't know if she was raped or not. Obviously, when you're a prostitute, your percentage likely of being raped or assaulted is very high, right? Like it's very high, it could happen. So it could have happened, but I also think that she always had these issues lingering in the back of her head, possibly like the grandfather um, or even the father image that she never got to meet. And I think this is that replica um, karmatic cycle replaying. She wants to really, in her mind, kill her perpetrators, which was the grandfather 
or the grandfather's friend that got her pregnant. She was never able to be in control of that situation because she was a child. She was never able to be in control of that situation of her father being incarcerated. So now she's reenacting the trauma once again on these these men. I don't know if they're innocent or not. Obviously we weren't there. No one really knows the answer to that. Um, I do think her family, every single one of them failed her. Obviously she had an incest relationship with her brother. That was also, you know, traumatic and trauma that she's been carrying around. And now you're gonna throw into the mix, she's mentally ill. And I, the system and society has failed her. I do not agree with her being executed. I understand some people probably don't like that. Some people are probably going to be upset with um, me saying that, saying, wait a sec, Crystal, she, she murdered seven men that were like innocent men. Um, she deserves to have done to her what she did. But the problem is, is that she's clearly extremely mentally ill. And this was a case that I think she should have been in a mental institution getting help for her mental illness rather than sending her to the table. I've done studies also on um, lethal injection and um, assisted, you know, um, death row when they're going on death row. Understand that it is significantly, significantly cheaper tax dollar wise to keep someone alive for 60 years. I know that sounds crazy, but one lethal injection shot is millions of dollars, literally millions of tax dollars. So I don't agree with it for the fact of, I feel like there's homelessness we could be resolving, putting these people in institutions for help, but the system fails mentally ill. The system 100% fails mentally ill. And I'm not even talking about serial killers, I'm just talking about in general society has been failed for mental illness. There are a lot of people sick mentally who are homeless, who have nowhere to go and our system fails them. You know, I was just wondering how you're gonna be, you know, at 9.30 tomorrow morning. Are you prepared? I'm, I'm all right, I'm all right with it. Can you feel I did some sloppy work, you know, and I left How have you prepared yourself for tomorrow morning? I, I'm all right with it. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Hey, I was tortured at BCI. They had, they had the intercom on in the room, and they kept lying that it wasn't on, and they were using sonic pressure on my head since 1997. Thinking that probably had the TV rigged. The TV or the mirror, something was rigged. They got a huge satellite on the compound. After they put the huge satellite on the compound, it could have been either rigged to the TV set or the mirror or something, because the electrician, when he put the mirror on the wall, he said, doesn't that look like a computer? Did that affect your mind in some way, the sonic? It was crushing my head and they were using sonic pressure continually. Then when I had three meetings with Miss Villacorda on it, every meeting I had, she increased the pressure of the volume of the calm, increased the harassment on the floor, increased the uh, trays being inedible, just increased every bit of my complaints and trashed all grievances. They are trying to make it look like I was crazy at all times. Had to wash all my food off. And then, then one day I didn't wash my food off and I was sick for three weeks, almost died. I'm okay, I'm okay. God is gonna be there. Jesus Christ is gonna be there. All the angels and everything. And you know, whatever, whatever's on the beyond, I think it's gonna be more like Star Trek beaming me up into a space vehicle, man. Then I move on, recolonize to another planet or whatever, but. You sabotaged my ass, society and the cops and the system. A raped woman got executed and not care about a human being and the truth being told. Now I know what Jesus was going through. We're gonna have to cut this interview, Nick. I'm not going to go into any more detail. I'm leaving, I'm glad. Thanks a lot, society, for railroading my ass. I'm sorry, I just, I believe that. Especially after watching Eileen speak about all of the things that she went through um, and talking about things, you know, before her execution, she was sick. She should not have been sent to death row. She should have been put in an institution. So when she says the system and society failed her, I agree 100% with that statement because she is 
not well. And that's millions and millions of tax dollars for one person. Now, also moving forward, we're gonna talk about some of the haunted locations that she supposedly haunts. So there's a motel room that's in Port Orange, Florida. And it is one of the most famous motel rooms known that where her and Ty stayed for a period of months between 1989 and 1990. She slept in room nine. Um, it has, but in 2015, they renumbered it to room seven. So if you're wanting to go stay there as a paranormal fan, it is um, the old Fairview Inn. And um, it says they renamed it to the Scoot Inn, the Scoot Inn. So anyway, I would just say, if you're interested in paranormal, they say they have paranormal activity there. Um, there's also the bar that she was arrested at, which is the Last Resort Bar. It's also in Port Orange, Florida. They have a shrine in there for her. They do say that there is some paranormal activity in there. Do I think she she's still earthbound? No, honestly. I think that she's probably like residual energy is definitely earthbound because that doesn't just go away. But you know, she was somewhat religious and she was saying that she couldn't wait to cross over to see Jesus and see God. Not a lot of serial killers say that. Um, I really do think she crossed. I think she wanted to cross. I also, um, I don't think she knew she was mentally ill, but I think she knew she wanted a restart. So I don't think that she she lingered like some of some of them do. And I guess maybe being a woman and, and no matter what, still having that like motherly female instinct inside of you that's just natural, I think that would be, she's one of the only serial killers I've ever heard say like, I wanna go to Jesus and I wanna go to God. So I think that obviously benefited her in the long run. So anyway, you know, Charlize Theron obviously played her in the 2003 movie Monster. It's a huge movie. She won tons of awards for it, including um, Academy Award. So there's a lot of people that go to this bar um, to, to like experience where Eileen was because this is people that love like serial killer um, sort of like memorabilia and follow you know paranormal stories so if anyone's been down there i would love to hear your experiences there my dad lived in sarasota for many years so i've been to florida quite a few times but i don't know where port orange is okay sarasota is on the west side um and so i've, I've pretty much just been to like tampa um orlando i have been to orlando but I've, port orange is on it's a little bit north um northeast of Orlando by Daytona Beach okay so apparently that's where all of this stuff is at so if you're ever down in that area let me know um, what what it's like to experience that I hope that you guys enjoyed this creeps and cosmetics um, I'm sorry it took me so long to kind of get back on track but I was upset with with the Bailey fans for a minute, you know, like there I'm not gonna lie There was a minute I considered quitting <laughs> creeps and cosmetics. And I was like, wait a minute, bitch You've been doing this for a long time paranormal has been your thing for years I've been a licensed cosmetologist for over 10 years. This isn't new. I've done um, On Twitch where I've talked about, you know paranormal while doing my makeup years ago So this isn't new it just Bailey got bigger than I did fast, but I just don't want to be compared to anybody. You know, like I'm a fan of Bailey and I feel like we all just need to like cheer each other on. And it's 2020. I thought we were done with like judgment and being mean to each other. You know what I mean? Make sure you follow me on social media, give my video a thumbs up, and as always, I will catch you guys next time. Did you guys see those videos on Instagram? I really need to sage now, now that I've I filmed and I need to sage. Like, I think Eileen crossed over, but I just need to make sure she crosses over again because I don't want her hanging out here tonight. Whew, okay, so I uh, ended up racing through the end of that video last night. And um, I thought I would come on today because I didn't finish talking about... I want to talk about Ty for a second. So Ty is the, um, the lesbian girlfriend that um, Eileen had had. And... Um, my question was, was like, where's Ty now? You know, like I wanted to add this on the video. So I actually did some research. So she has pretty much stayed out of the public eye since Eileen was, um, you know, executed. Apparently she didn't um, send any letters while she was on death row, didn't really have any communication with her. 
I watched an interview that she Ty had done. Um, I think it was like 2013, 2012. So it was it's fairly old. It's a good 10 years old. She was saying basically she was young and impressionable. So if you think back to when they were like a couple, they were together for four years, and at the time, I think Eileen was like 30 and Ty was like 24. So just think back to your age when you were 24. You know, like when you're 24, you do not have your life figured out. So anyway, she um, pretty much cut all ties with Eileen when she went into, you know, death row. No communication, and she does have a family now. She is married to a female. They live in Pennsylvania and they have a family together. Good for her, but I, I bet it's hard for her to constantly be associated with a serial killer, right? So long story short was I hope I got my point across last night. So basically I didn't have a lot of paranormal activity in the studio while I was filming, but I got this like horrible stomach pain last night and I couldn't get rid of it. So I did end up saging. Now remember, um, Eileen claimed that she was being like drugged by the prison like officials, people that were giving her food. So maybe I was feeling that sort of pain. I really don't sense that she is earthbound still. I do think she wanted to cross over, but I do think there's residual energy. I think maybe last night I was even sensing the residualness. So anyway, I just wanted to throw this little extra clip in. And now I gotta film some vlogs for you guys. Also, I'm on TikTok. If you guys haven't uh, followed me on TikTok, there is my profile. And um, follow me on TikTok. Catch you guys later. Bye.